Last year I was here, and Lynn, I don't remember so many jokes when you came up here. <laughs> I want to thank Antonio uh, for taking the time to join Jane and myself tonight. He's a great, dear friend, charismatic leader of the city, the state, and the nation. And I do want to thank him for coming here tonight. I also want to thank Matt Peterson and Global Green USA for this honor. This honor really should be shared with Jamie Krug and all the men and women who work so hard for Falcon water-free technology and get all the snickers when they go out there, talk about this new exceptional technology that really uses no water. There's absolutely no reason for a urinal to use any water anywhere in the world. There are many heroes besides the men and women at Falcon Water Free Technology, and those are the people of the Green Movement, and many people who are here tonight, including Mike Massey of the Pipe Fitters Union, because without the pipe fitters, the plumbers of this nation, we would never have water free urinals. I also want to thank Tom Britt, the chairman of the Metropolitan Water District, who pioneered giving rebates to people, businesses, school districts who put in water-free urinals, ours and our competitors. And this program has really helped bring water-free urinals uh, throughout the city and more to come. I also want to recognize Andrew Edelman, the head of LA's Department of Building and Safety, who has pioneered safe and green practices in all our buildings. Thank you, Andrew. And a special thanks to my partner, who at first laughed, but then realized the potential of this product, who you're also honoring tonight, Jeff Skull. He was one of the first people to believe in water for urinals, and he has become a leading investor. Jeff, thank you very much. And obviously, I also want to salute my fellow nominees, uh, Jane and my friend Wallace Annenberg, who we've known for over 25 years, and Zem Joaquin, whose fabulous efforts on behalf of the planet, and you'll hear from them shortly. I walk here tonight to really, what should I say to all of you about water-free urinals? Why would a guy who was in the media business for 40 years, a cable TV operator, invest in a company that makes water for urinals? Well, I thought about it. And the history of water-free urinals and this breakthrough technology, this clean technology, goes back a long, long time ago. And I want to tell you, and this is the first time I've ever revealed this, why I invested in this company. It all took place one August day in 1951, when my immigrant grandfather took me fishing for the first time. I was six years old. My grandfather, Isidore Hoberman, my mother's father, was not a patient man. He was, what some would say, very short-tempered. He cursed a lot in many different languages. He was miserly. He was also very short, five foot four, five foot five, but he was tough as nails. He ran away from home in Belarus, or was it Lithuania, I can't remember, at age 15. He joined the Canadian Army in World War I, and when the war was over, he came to Canada. They got free passage. After the war, he went from Winnipeg to Minneapolis, and he started a family at 19. In 1925, he became secretary of the Cloth, Hat, Cap, and Millinery Workers Local 12. No wonder on the piano of his and my grandmother Pauline's little duplex on Queen Avenue were two busts. Not Roosevelt and Truman, no, not for him. Trotsky and Eugene Debs. <laughs> As the oldest male child, I was thrilled to be finally invited at age six to go with my grandfather on one of his frequent fishing trips on the nearby lakes of Minneapolis. Isidore loved the outdoors. He loved fishing. 
He was a true environmentalist, even though I'm sure he didn't even know what the word meant. But he wasn't like all those Orvis lovers here in the audience, and I see several. He wasn't a fancy fly fisherman. Nope. He used a cane pole with worms and minnows, and he fished for sunfish and crappies and occasional walleye or northern pike. Grandpa Hoberman also believed in going out early. And I wasn't so keen on this at 6. But at 5 AM, we left that duplex in his rusty old Nash, and it smelled of fish. And we drove 45 minutes to Lake Minnetonka. He rented a rowboat. He rowed out to the middle of the lake where he thought the fish would be. He showed me how to bait my hook. He was right. There were plenty of fish there. Within 10 minutes, I caught a small sunfish, maybe this big. My first problem of the morning was when I caught the fish, I didn't want to take the slimy thing off the hook. But Grandpa was old school. He showed me once how to do it. And as far as he was concerned, I could sit there all day with one fish, fish on my pole if I did not personally remove the next fish. Now, these were small fish, but I was still reluctant. Nevertheless, at age six, I made an adult decision. I slowly managed to maneuver the hook out of the sunfish mouth. But I had another problem, a more pressing problem besides hook removal. After two hours, I had to pee. <laughs> I had seen washrooms where we had rented the boat, and I politely asked my grandfather to row us to shore so I could go to the bathroom. He turned to me in his strong Yiddish American accent, and he said these words to me, and I'll never forget these words. He said, no, Boychik. We have a waterless urinal aboard. <laughs> and from the stern of the boat where he was sitting, he threw me an empty Maxwell House coffee can. <laughs> Just like this. The first water-free urinal. That's how I got interested in water-free urinals. Now, in reality, water-free urinals were invented by a German engineer, Dittmar George, at Bausch. This patented green product that is so good for the environment that my grandfather and I both love this environment does not cost business anything or the schools or stadiums any more than water guzzling versions that we see all over that haven't changed in 75 years. The waterless version is better in every way than the standard flush urinal, which wastes 40,000 gallons per urinal per year of fresh water. Think of this, think of this. There are 54 million existing urinals in the world, 9 million in the United States, 900,000 in Los Angeles and Los Angeles County. If Antonio, the city council, magically converted all the urinals in the city of Los Angeles and the county supervisors in the county, within five years, we would save 3 billion gallons of water per month or 36 billion gallons a year. That's 18%. That's 18% of all the water we use that we would just save by putting in water for urinals. Ours or our competitors? Think how this would help the Department of Water and Power and the Metropolitan Water District. Everybody wins. More importantly, the people of Los Angeles wins. These are real statistics. This is really, truly possible. So for this ex-cable operator, it was easy to make a decision to invest in green technology that works, 
that benefits society and enables plumbers to have more jobs. In my opinion, conservation not only makes good business sense, but it is the only responsible way to guarantee safe and secure water supply for our region, our state, and our nation now and in the future. Again, I thank all of you for coming and supporting the environment and Global Green. I thank Global Green for this award. I want to especially thank my wife Jane for her support and her love of the outdoors, and my daughter Nicole, who is also here, who loves everything green, and my two Orvis fly fishing sons, Adam and David, and their fiancés, Lauren and Sabina. And of course, I want to thank Grandpa Hoberman for taking me fishing. Thank you very much.